What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Birds in the Trap, MMA, and I'm back with another banger. All right, boys, today... Damn, I got the hiccups. Anyways, boys, today, as you can see, we are going to be talking about career-ending fights, okay? These are fights where... Guys, this isn't the normal, typical fighters who had a big fall-off video, okay? These are fights that happened, and the loser of the fight or even the winner in a few cases, it just completely sent them spiraling down, which I guess you can say is the same as a downfall. <laughs> but, hey, I need content, all right? This is more interesting. Okay, so, before I get into the list, we're going to talk about content real quick, and I'm going to turn my camera on, because I got a question for you boys, if anyone's going to... Oh, I got a haircut, by the way. Yep. I got a question for you boys, if anyone's going to uh, answer me on this. But I wanted to know, guys... My upload schedule has been a little ass, okay, and I go through periods where I'm consistent for like a week or two, and then like a week I just completely fall off, and I think it's just because of energy, you know what I mean, like having the energy to take the time to sit down and make these, because I try and make a few videos each sitting, and it can take a lot out of me, so I feel like I go through a week where I work really hard on top of my other work and other things I have to do, and then... I just hit a burnout week. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't make any video after the Strickland and DuPlessis fight. So, anyways, where am I going with this? Well, guys, what I want to start doing is I'm going to keep my list videos going because my channel is a lot of list videos. That's damn near every video. And I don't mind that. I like the lists. They're fun to make and they, they get more views. But I think I'm also just going to hop on here and just give random takes, okay? Barely edited videos. Just get on here and start yapping. Because I did that with my... Uh, Gaethje and Holloway reaction when that fight was announced I just sat here and talked you know what I mean and I think to help the upload schedule I'm going to be doing more of that guys so expect more opinions and just rant type of videos some yap sessions you know what I mean um expect more of those instead of the list we're going to keep the list going but yeah I'm just letting you guys know that's the direction I think I want to go and let me know if you think that's a good idea or not because I take all feedback on this channel all right Anyways, guys, let's get into what we're all here for. Oh, and like and subscribe. Okay. Career-ending fights. These are fights that objectively messed up a dude's career, all right? We're going to be starting off with an obvious one. Okay, we're just going to get this one out of the way because I want to express my opinion on it because I've never talked about this fight on YouTube. Conor McGregor versus Habib Nurmagomedov, all right? Like I said, let's get an obvious one out of the way. Uh, this fight broke McGregor. This fight broke Conor McGregor mentally physically too as you can see in the picture but mentally this fight broke this man and i'm in the way boom this fight it just completely broke mcgregor his confidence will never be where it once was um you know going into this fight he had only lost to floyd mayweather in a different sport and then he had been submitted by nate diaz but it was still like all right he's the man on the feet he beat eddie alvarez he didn't lose the belt and, you know, Connor was just talking so much shit, you know, at this point. And you guys know the trash talk. It was a personal, personal fight. But the fact that McGregor got beaten so dominantly, barely won a round, a pity round. This fight destroyed him. His confidence, he'll never be the same. And I look at McGregor as someone who is already graduated the UFC, right? He made all the money, became the biggest star. He's past the UFC. He doesn't need the UFC. Whereas, you know, there's other dudes still in the UFC. There's other kids in school that haven't graduated yet who are working their way up. They're hungry. They want to achieve stuff. You know what I mean? And Conor McGregor, he's just that, you know, he's, Conor McGregor is the type of guy to go to a high school football game in his like Letterman jacket and be like, I remember, man, back in my day, good times, good times. You know, I, I bet I could still get out there and do it. You know what? <laughs> like, that's literally how I think of McGregor. He just, he thinks he can still beat everybody, but mm -hmm. he sucks. Connor cannot hang in the top 15, all right? Um, and I just think that this fight sent Connor into a very dark place that he hasn't recovered from, uh, specifically with alcohol and maybe some other drugs, too. And I, I actually don't think this is getting talked about enough. I have a theory that this fight might be why he's not fighting right now. And that's because of alcoholism, okay? 
I don't think Conor McGregor is in fighting shape. He's disrespecting the game. And if he were to come back at this point, the game is going to show him why you can't fuck around and just drink and do coke and smoke blunts for like three years. You know what I mean? He's going to come back and get toasted. So this fight... This was a bad one. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on. Let's move on. We're at, we're already at five and a half minutes. Fuck. Number two, Henan Barrow versus TJ Dillashaw. Now I feel like Henan Barrow is extremely underrated. Obviously, he's not on like Mount Rushmore or anything, but I feel like Henan Barrow he only gets brought up when we're talking about this. You know what I mean? His downfall, his fights with Dillashaw, and you know you can look at. Burrell's resume and say that he wasn't fighting the best guys he was the interim champion when Dominic Cruz couldn't fight and he was fighting the next best guys you know what I mean I know Michael McDonald and Eddie Wineland when you look at them you know on a resume on paper Smith style they might not look the greatest but these are the these are the contenders he has four title wins he's literally a top four bantamweight of all time right Cruz Aljo you can put Dillashaw above Barrow, and then Barrow. But you could even put Barrow above Dill. <laughs> you could even put Barrow above Dillashaw because what is Dillashaw's wins? Okay, Barrow, fair. Cody Garbrandt, who gives like all right, all right man. Uh, but yeah, like I said, man, four title wins. Okay, with only one of them being for the undisputed title, but it was dominant nonetheless. He was finishing his fights, entertaining. And then out of nowhere, you got a team alpha male dude, TJ Dillashaw, swoops in, took the fight on like semi-short notice. The main event fell out, so they had to make this fight on somewhat short notice. And TJ Dillashaw went in there and smoked him. Um, so that that's the fight, man. That's the one that did it. Burrell went on a bad losing streak after this. Uh, he was on a 33-fight win streak going into this. And yeah, man, I just want to end this segment with... Put some respect on Burrell, all right? That dude is... I know he's not a top 15 of all time, but I literally never hear his name unless it's brought up with this, all right? Top 5 Bantamweight, Henan Burrell, he's up there. All right, number three we're going to be getting into is Chris Weidman versus Luke Rockhold. Chris Weidman has two fights that ruined his career, and they're both on the screen. Chris was once a dominant middleweight champion, okay? I think he has uh, three title defenses, um, Chris has had a rough going, man. I honestly feel bad for him because he's such a fighter. He's got that fighter spirit where, you know, when he loses, it's not like, fuck, I should retire. He's like, all right, got to work harder and build myself back up. Good for him. Not anymore. It's, it's going to destroy his health, honestly. Um, since losing the title to Luke Rockhold, he has gone two and six. All right. With four of them being pretty bad knockouts you know what i mean when weidman gets knocked out <laughs> he doesn't get dropped and recover he has one of those chins where if he if he gets dropped he's he's cooked okay he's got that johnny walker chin you know what i mean <laughs> to make things worse on top of losing the belt to luke rockhold and then going on a horrible streak he destroyed his own leg when trying to kick uriah hall all right you guys have seen the clip of him breaking his leg. I'd put it up on the screen, but the UFC is going to fuck me. Um, so, absolutely brutal, brutal leg break. Worse than the McGregor leg break. Worse than the Silva leg break. I know it's not a leg break contest, right? But he had a bad one. And um, he was out for, what was it, two and a half years? Came back at UFC 292 to lose by decision. It's actually pretty impressive that he made it to the decision against Brad Tavares. But Brad Tavares is the worst matchup possible for Weidman coming back because of his impeccable takedown defense. Brad Tavares, that's the only area he is elite, okay? You cannot take that motherfucker down. On the feet, he's just average. But we still saw him piecing up Chris, Chris Weidman, Chris. He brutalized both of the legs, okay? I think Chris Weidman said he injured his other leg in that fight. So... Chris Weidman, what are you doing, bro? Get out. You should have retired a long time ago. Okay, this is a personal message. You should have retired a long time ago. And I know I'm just some dude yapping in my room. But this is not good. Like, you you can't do it forever, all right? But, listen, guys. That's still my boy. Roll the clip. And 
this is still my boy! Let's get into the number four pick. Okay, I put my camera away because I wanted you guys to see the full screen. Um, but we got a two-part entry, okay? First two-part entry in Birds in the Trap MMA history, okay? And that's because of how similar these situations are for both of these guys. Okay, now that you've seen the slide, I'm, I'm turning this shit back on. This is this is like an identical situation for both of them, which is insane that this happened uh, against two of the goats. But Dominic Reyes versus John Jones and Johnny Hendricks versus GSP, man, uh, they share an entry because of how similar this is. Like I said, uh, they both fought all-time legends uh, near the end of their title reigns, um, obviously being... Reyes versus Jones, Hendricks versus GSP, and they both lost in very controversial decisions, okay? Now, Reyes clearly beat Jones. That's just facts. But Hendricks over GSP, you can still make the argument. You can, you know, if you want to give that fight to Hendricks, I'm cool with that. But luckily for Hendricks, he went on to win the vacant title in his next fight. He beat Robbie Lawler by split decision, a fight that you could even say that was a robbery, but I think they just felt bad for the man, Johnny Hendricks. <laughs> um, so, anyways, he got that belt, you know what I mean? And that's where these two stories kind of divide, okay? Hendricks got that belt, all right? And he retired on a two-loss streak. He went two and six after the GSP fight, but he's at least a champ for life, you know what I mean? You can't take that away from him. Oh, man. It sucks to talk about this guy. I feel like I talk about Dominic Reyes quite a lot for all the wrong reasons. And there's a few guys on this list that I feel like are like that. Reyes did not get as lucky as winning the vacant belt in his next fight. All right. He fought for the vacant belt against Blahovich, but he suffered a loss. A pretty bad loss, too. If you know, you know. Now, he has lost four in a row since the Jones fight. Now, we're not counting the Jones fight, so it's only three. Three of them, they were all brutal knockouts. You know what I mean? And he took like a step down in competition each time. Jan Blachowicz, obviously the next title contender. Obviously good enough to beat Reyes. Yuri, now don't get don't get all crazy and say I'm calling Yuri some like chump, right? Because I say dip in competition. It was Yuri's second UFC fight, right? And he was ranked below Reyes. So... And then, he, and then he loses to Ryan Spann. I just forgot about it, man. I was going to move on. He lost to Ryan Spann by a jab. Dominic Reyes, man. Please don't fight Olberg. That's all I'm going to end this off with, all right? So that's number four. We got a two-part entry. Just because of the similarities, I think it, I think it deserves it, right? You agree? All right. All right, man. Number five. Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. We all knew it was coming. You this, you see the title of this video, and you know this is on the list. And, um, yeah, we're going to end... I know everyone likes to say, oh, we're going to end it off with a bang. In this video, we're going to end it off with the worst entry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, this is the worst fall-off in this video and in history, I think. I mean, who's had a worse fall-off? Maybe Hennem Morrow, actually. But... See, that's that's what I was saying. He gets forgotten about, except for these. <laughs> Anyways, I am sure we all know the story, so I'm not going to get too into it because I don't want to cry on the camera. But uh, we just need to give Tony Ferguson's post-2020 career a moment of silence. All right. Tony has now lost six in a row. And you know what? I actually put six on this, and I thought six right now, but I just remembered that he lost to Patty Pimblett. I deleted that from my memory, okay? But it's actually a fucking seven loss streak. But, you know, Tony, he has said he doesn't want to retire. After the Patty fight, everyone's saying it in their head, Tony, Tony, it's time, Tony. And um, he doesn't want to retire. And it's very unfortunate. Um, Tony is delusional these days, okay? Mentally, he's very deluded. Um Every comeback, he swears he's in his prime. Um, and I don't like when Tony Ferguson fights these days, but the buildup is fun. A Tony Ferguson fight week, he can be fighting next week. It's going to be fun. You know what I mean? Just because, 
he's always hyping himself up, you know, he's always talking about how he's got a new team around him this time, and, you know, he's always talking about how I just wasn't in the right mental state, and I didn't have a good team, and when I have a good team, we go on a 12-fight win streak. And the way he talks, man, it makes me pick him. I picked him to beat Bobby Green, as I shouldn't have. I knew he was going to lose, but hearing him talk, I was like, you know what? I'm actually starting to think Tony's... Tony's on his second prime, you know what I mean? And he was saying the same shit before the Pimblet fight, but I learned my lesson there. I picked Pimblet. But, you know, as Tony Ferguson would say, five fights in a title, baby. <laughs> um, Tony, we love you. It's time. And that concludes my list, all right? What did I miss? This is a topic where I feel like you can kind of give multiple different lists. It depends on eras, and it depends on how bad of a fall-off we're looking at. But, yeah, let me know what I missed, and uh, like and subscribe for more content. Let me know if you guys are down to see more just rant videos instead of just list videos, because I'll definitely be able to make more content that way. So, like and sub. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.